Uh, next up, we have uh, a, another uh, candidate for county commissioner, and uh, this is in my county of Clatsop County, uh, Doug Thompson. Doug, welcome. Good morning. Thank you, Larry. Glad to be here. Yeah, those were interesting comments that Vince had made at the end because he was talking about what you can do as county commissioners. And of course, uh, starting um, eight years ago, we started overhauling the makeup of the county commissioner board here in Clatsop, and that was the only way we were able to uh, change the course of history and get rid of the LNG terminals here. That's so correct. You want to be part of that great legacy. <laughs> uh, I do. I do. Uh, Are you on uh, mute, Doug? No. Oh, okay. No, um, so uh, just to be clear with uh, everyone who wants to um, uh, make sure that no good deed goes unpunished, I want to make sure everyone understands that I had helped both uh, Doug and his opponent, Pam Webb, in this uh, election. I've helped them both with uh, getting their data ready. Uh, the data uh, for running campaigns uh, is really what makes campaigns run anymore. And you know, when, when you hear people talk about canvassing, it all uh, boils down to having access on who to talk to. And so, you know, my objective in in supporting democracy is making sure that the electorate knows as much as possible about the candidates so they can make an informed choice. So, and I was glad to help both of them. So, Doug, what are the, the what are the top issues uh, that you see here in Clatsop County? Uh, well, Larry, I'm running for District Three uh, County Commission uh, because I do see uh, Clatsop County taking a leadership role on uh, very important uh, issues, uh, and I can describe those. Essentially, I, I coined the term the three Fs: fish, forests, and foreigners. Foreigners being our visitor industry. Uh, each of those three sec sectors, uh, fishing, uh, both commercial and sports fishing, forestry, both public and private, uh, and the visitor industry, uh, all have deep roots in this county, in Clatsop County. Uh, some folks, uh, it seems intuitive that fish and forests have been around uh, way, well before, uh, you know, we Europeans came upon the scene, uh, but... Uh, the visitor industry has been around in Clatsop County and been an important component uh, since the late 19th century uh, when the trains uh, would bring uh, folks down, especially during the summers. Uh, uh, there were no highways, no uh, motor vehicles, and so it was uh, literally the trains. And they, and they became known as the daddy trains on both sides of the river because the families would tend to vacation here in the summer and the uh, husbands and fathers would come down on the weekends, the weekend trains. So, uh, you know, since the late 19th century, um, really serious European settlement of the local area, we've had those three comparative advantages. That's the core. Uh, obviously, there are other issues, but, but those are the ones I know uh, about, uh, given my service for over a decade on the Astoria City Council uh, a number of years ago. Uh, and I fully intend to dive in to those issues. Probably the most, the two most, uh, I would say, contentious, uh, and where I sh really think uh, I can add my voice in leadership uh, is in uh, forestry, particularly the state forest, uh, the Clatsop State Forest, which is the largest of the 15 uh, county state forests that uh, uh, you, you and uh, uh, Commissioner uh, Candidate Adams uh, discussed, uh, and uh, also uh, uh, fishing in that we have our iconic uh, commercial fishers on the main stem of the Columbia River uh, called the gill netters. And um, uh, I mean, that's a real fight. And that's just another battle and a pretty long uh, war being fought over allocation. I don't want to get too deep into the weeds about that, but uh, I do have a background in local issues. All politics is local. Um, uh, clearly, uh, we've got everything that happens up river of uh, Clatsop County impacts us in one way or another. Yeah, I can hardly wait till the wastewater starts leaking into Hanford and the, the Columbia starts glowing at night. <laughs> uh, let's not go there. So it was interesting that, that uh, the 
uh, Vince Adams was talking about the Lynn County lawsuit because we dealt with the same issue here. And it was also very contentious. Um, and our county decided to opt out of it. Um, uh, again, but it's still an ongoing issue. Um, and as I said earlier, the, the makeup here is we have five county commissioners and they're uncompensated. So they're all volunteer board that uh, manages the county through a county manager. Um, what, what, and this is the year where we elect a majority of them. So three of the five positions are up for election. Uh, and unlike uh, other places in the state, uh, democracy is alive and well here. We have multiple candidates running for each position. Uh, Larry, that's correct. Uh, let me go back to uh, the uh, Lynn County lawsuit. Um, uh, some context for folks. Uh, you're correct that uh, Clatsop County, Clatsop County Commission, uh, about a year ago, the current commissioners and the current uh, county management, the current commissioners uh, voted three to two, so it was a close vote, to opt out of the Lynn County lawsuit. Uh, of the 15 uh, Forest Trust Lands counties, that, that is uh, Oregon counties that have state forest land in, within their borders, uh, we were the only one of 15 counties that opted out. However, uh, uh, we're the big dog in the fight. The Clatsop is uh, by far the largest revenue producing uh, timber county for the state forests, uh, between 15 and $20 million in recent times of timber revenue that flows through the county coffers out to some 50 plus taxing districts. Um, not every taxing district gets revenue uh, every year because uh, they're not harvesting tree state trees in every taxing district every year. Um, so we were unique in that, and uh, the argument against it was, well, you, you're giving up a seat at the table. Uh, and, and we said, well, you know, nobody asked us to be in this lawsuit. Uh, we don't align with the, the powerful uh, big timber, uh, big corporate Koch brothers uh, money that's behind that piece of junk lawsuit. And uh, so we opted out. Uh, I do want to comment quickly. Uh, one thing you said uh, in our home rule form of uh, commission government, which has been around for a little over 30 years, it was the late 1980s when we, when we uh, changed from the traditional three full-time uh, county managers, or excuse me, county commissioners uh, with a county administrator. Uh, uh, to the home rule form of government, five part-time volunteers. And then the chair is a rotating uh, assignment, if you will. Uh, the chair is elected annually uh, from, uh, uh, by, the, by his or her fellow commissioners. Uh, the, the positions are not uncompensated. Uh, I think they're somewhere about $1,100 a month is, is called a stipend. Um, that's really uh, well paid in comparison to the five city council or five cities in Clatsop County. I, I don't think any of them uh, approach anything close to that. When I was on the Astoria City Council, we got sixty dollars a month. Uh, the mayor got a hundred dollars a month. Um, but in comparison to uh, the majority of Oregon's counties, some uh, twenty, I think twenty-seven of the thirty-six are traditional three-person. Uh, in those counties, the full-time position, I mean, that's serious money. So, uh, uh, so yeah, we are volunteers, but we're not uh, uncompensated for the number of hours that, that need to be put in to effectively govern uh, the county as policymakers. And I have a couple of slides about Clatsop County, uh, which uh, shows why it's unique. Um, John, if you'd show the first slide, uh, this is – this is how people voted Trump versus Clinton in the 2016 race. There were eight counties that voted for Clinton and the other 27 voted for, 28 voted for Trump. Um, uh, and so, you know, just looking at acreage, it looks like we we're a Trump state, but fortunately uh, the, the blue counties are where most of the population are. We are a, Blue County, um, surrounded in a sea of red. Uh, so the next slide shows 
where we are in voter registration. Um, so we're right in the middle. Uh, about half the counties have more uh, voters registered and, and about half the counties have less. And then the th last slide is the political party registration. So we have just about 9,500 Democrats. The next biggest group of people are the non-affiliated, which continues to rise thanks to Motor Voter. And then we have the Republicans. And the gap between the Democrats and the Republicans have been slowly increasing over the past couple of years, which is reflected in the makeup of who we elect to office. So um, when I first came here in 2000, uh, the county was predominantly run by Republicans, and now it's predominantly run by Democrats. And that didn't happen by accident, and your fingerprints were all over that. And the the heritage of the of the area is is uh, Scandinavian, uh, and so uh, both the support of unions and the support of the of sort of social concepts for governance are are more warmly received here because of that heritage or at least that's what's usually believed. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'm half <laughs> in quarter Norwegian. Betsy, do we have any uh, uh, questions on the line? Uh, no, actually, there are no questions. So the final slide I have uh, shows how the districts are in Clasper County. Um, the county commission race is, is a great place for people to start, uh, especially if they've served on boards. So if, if you're contemplating public service, this is one you should look at, but you would want to uh, check out how your county operates because each county seems to have their own rules. Uh, I, would, I would guess that Vince Adams' race is a countywide race, and so he has to run a campaign uh, with all the Democrats in his county. Uh, we have five districts that correspond to the five county commissioners and the race that Doug is running for is the one in the center, um, uh, District 3. Uh, what's interesting is that three of the districts sort of split up Astoria into thirds. Astoria is the most populous city and so each of those three commissioner districts takes a third of the population and then two is Gearhart, South Warrington and Seaside and then five picks up Cannon Beach and, and the lower half of the county. Um, and so this, what this means is that there is, is a more direct relationship between the electorate and the county commissioner. People know who to go to uh, to take their issues to in the, in the county commission. Uh, Larry, I, I, I agree, I can't, I can't agree more. Uh, I served 11 years on the Astoria City Council, as I've said, and I represented Ward 3 of the four wards, and the city charter had the mayor run at large. Uh, I'm a great believer in geographic uh, sub-districts, and uh, uh, I would urge candidate uh, Adams to carefully consider, uh, even if, the, if their county remains uh, three uh, full-time, uh, fully paid commissioners, uh, that they consider a charter amendment dividing the county up into uh, districts. It puts the politician closer, closest to the grassroots. Uh, it also makes the position uh, more affordable and more achievable for, for citizens. You have to campaign for uh, uh, a, a percentage or a fraction uh, of going countywide. And when you have multiple candidates running for county or uh, uh, district wide, uh, uh, seats, the message just gets lost, it's a cacophony. And uh, for example, the city of Portland is just, I think most people would say, except for maybe an incumbent or two, uh, is just a mess. And uh, what, what you have are the, uh, the have-nots being underrepresented and usually the haves uh, being overrepresented. And that's certainly the case uh, in the city of Portland. So. Uh, the other thing I would I would quickly uh, like to say is that um, uh, we Clatsop County is the bluest and the greenest of Oregon's coastal counties, uh, but um, uh, you know there's uh, there there's a line there that um, uh, rural Oregon outside the metro areas there is resentment when uh, folks off the I five corridor and the Portland metro area come into the area. Uh, uh, to teach us uh, how to take care of 
And so, um, uh, I mean, I'll match my green credentials uh, of accomplishments uh, on the environment uh, with anybody uh, in terms of uh, the positive impacts in Clatsop County. I have been uh, saving forests and standing up for our sustainable local uh, gill netters uh, for most of my adult life and in public service. And uh, uh, those are sustainable industries. And uh, I'd welcome the debate with any of the uh, I-5 enviros that want to come down here and say that we're not doing uh, what needs to be done and that we're not accomplishing things because we are. Indeed. There are so many places in Oregon where democracy needs to be supported uh, and this is not one of them. So thank you very much. But, you know, once upon a time, Astoria was uh, headed to be the, the predominant city in the state. Uh, we've sent governors and state and, and U.S. senators from, from this town uh, in, in past times. Um, and it's certainly a, a robust environment, which manifests itself by the number of candidates we have running for all the positions. We do um, believe in contested primaries. It's healthy for democracy, and uh, it will reinvigorate uh, the Democratic Party uh, in ways that we can't foresee, but I think it's healthy. Um, and uh, we are a one-party state, and that is not sustainable over time. Yeah. Anything you'd like to add in closing, Doug? Uh, I, I will tell you that I got into the race uh, very late. Um, uh, I made it a three-way race. Um, because, uh, uh, frankly, my opponents, I uh, had serious policy differences with them. And I also felt um, uh, that my track record, uh, I know what I'm doing when it comes to serving on a local governing uh, policymaking board. And I'm used to getting things done in the public interest at the local level, accomplishments, real accomplishments. So talk is cheap, rhetoric's cheap. Uh, my track record is a matter of public record and it's out there for everyone to see. Um, the chances are uh, that it's very tough under our county charter uh, for there to be an outright winner in May um, uh, for, for the seat. And so there's a fairly decent chance that, that uh, it's gonna go to November the top two. Um, and, and, uh, but you, you know, you never know. I can't make any predictions. We don't do any local polling. Uh, so, uh, uh, no one has a, a lock on this race and, uh, I welcome my opponents, uh, to the, to the fight. It's, uh, the marketplace of ideas. And, uh, I think, uh, uh, compare the records and compare the accomplishments. And I, uh, hope and think that, uh, uh, the majority of uh, voters in District 3 will vote for me. Thank you. Yeah, the, the electoral system is really complicated and, and people get lost in it. But uh, the, the previous candidate is in a partisan, in a county that elects uh, uh, their candidates by political party. And, and so that's why all the Democrats are running for uh, the primary race. And so the Democrats will put up their candidate the Republican Party fielded no candidate, but if the Republican Party had a candidate, then they would they would field a candidate that would then face off in the fall. So that's why uh, uh, the Democrat in Benton County can win with a plurality, which means the, the most votes out of the votes cast, as opposed to a majority, which is 50%. So in Doug's race, which is a nonpartisan race, uh, if if one of the candidates wins 50% or more, then they are automatically uh, the candidate that moves forward. And then what happens in November is just a, a coronation. If nobody gets a majority, then the top two go off and and uh, uh, then the winner uh, is who, who gets the most in November. And we had this a couple of years ago when uh, Tessa Scheller uh, ran against... Um, what's her name, and uh, there was a third candidate that came in and took away enough votes so that we had to go to a, a runoff in the fall, and then uh, Tessa lost. Any questions there, online? Oh, go uh, ahead. Yeah, Larry, I think there's, uh, Jilly asked about specific uh, policy differences between Doug and uh, his opponents. Sure, um, uh, well, 
specifically speaking on on forestry, uh, I think I differ with uh, one one of my opponents in terms of uh, uh, support from the timber industry. Uh, I it will come as no surprise that I will not be receiving any support <laughs> from big timber uh, through the OFIC or the Koch brothers. Uh, I am an affiliate member of Local 1097 United Steelworkers, which are the workers of the Koch Brothers uh, Georgia Pacific Wana Mill. Uh, I am not on their uh, favorite list. So uh, uh, support from the timber industry is one area where uh, I differ with at least one of my opponents. But the other policy areas are, um, we have little time, but uh, housing. Um, uh, the county really has a limited uh, role to play uh, in housing, the actions in the five cities, that's by Oregon land use law, that's a whole other subject, but just those folks who think that uh, county, that this county has a major role to play in housing other than uh, funding the study and facilitating, uh, no, the action is with the five uh, cities. Lastly, I'd like to say um, I am a Democrat. I've been a Democrat all my life. I started protesting when I was 14 years old, uh, the Johnson Humphrey versus Goldwater Miller uh, race when I grew up in uh, Orange County, California, and I've been at it ever since. Um, I was also a Bernie guy. I supported Bernie Sanders uh, in the uh, primaries, uh, but uh, once that uh, decision was settled, uh, uh, I voted for Hillary Clinton, so I know how to come together. Uh, as Democrats uh, when necessary. The last thing I'd say, I am proud to say that I received the endorsement of Progressive Oregon uh, in my race. And I would like to add that this has been a civil um, uh, election and we've had no mudslinging uh, in any of the races that I'm aware of. So uh, we're really doing democracy the way it should be done. Mm -hmm. uh, any other questions, Betsy? Uh, no, that was it. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Doug. Good luck with your election. Um, and we'll see you around. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.